Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats. Today I'm doing the Tom Hanks book tag. So I was tagged by Sam from Bots on Tomes. I think this is actually the first time I've been tagged by someone else for something, so I'm just was so honored. This tag was originally created by Emily Jean, and I will put links to both of their videos down below in the description. The first question is about the movie Big, and it's to identify a book that you read when you were young that was intended for a more mature audience. So this is actually really difficult for me to answer because I'm really good at self-censoring. The book that came to mind, I think I technically was the intended audience when I read this book, but I don't know if I was ever gonna be it definitely was not the right age to read it when I did. It is Ready or Not by Meg Cabot. It's actually the sequel to All American Girl, which I loved. I read it in this phase that I had when I was obsessed with reading books about the president and the president's children. I was obsessed basically with the White House. And so I read All American Girl because the main character saves the president from an assassination attempt kind of accidentally and then also dates his son and it was great and I really loved it so of course I picked up the next book and I, I read the back but I just thought this can't really be what I think that's what like I just assumed it would be more like an all-American girl and less like what it was which was a book about whether or not the main character is going to have sex with her boyfriend the president's son and it just was like not something I was prepared to read. It was not something I really enjoyed reading, but I just, I think part of my brain thought that like it would be more like the first book in the series. And so it's actually really funny. I talked to a friend years later. She had the exact same reaction to this series that I did. We both loved the first book and we were both like, what for the second book? So the second question is kind of based on Forrest Gump. You know, life is like a box of chocolates, so like books are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. What book did you pick up not knowing anything about it? So this also was a really difficult question for me to answer because I'm really obsessed with researching things before I read them or watch them. I just don't like to go into things totally blind. I used to have this book club, I mentioned it before, where we wrote in books and then mailed them to each other. And I did not know what the book was going to be until it appeared on my doorstep, like until I got that package and opened it. And then I had to read it because it was part of this book club. And so one of the books that I read for that that I actually really enjoyed is called To Say Nothing of the Dog by Connie Willis. This actually has been reviewed or or like promoted by John Green who really enjoyed it which I found out after I'd read it and I did hear from friends like oh Grant my friend Grant recommended it and they're like oh when you get Grant's book that one is really great but uh, I was totally it was totally not what I expected at all from just anything but it was fabulous not only because the book itself is really entertaining but the copy that I read had three or four friends comments in it already and they had the best comments it was really hilarious I described the book as a time-traveling Victorian romp the third question is based on Sleepless in Seattle, and it was the last book to keep you up late or sleepless reading. Definitely when I look at what I've read recently, The Winner's Curse of this book for me, technically I think I was up until like 11.30 and then I finished it, but I started it at like noon. So I started reading it and I just didn't leave my apartment until I finished it. The, the beginning was intriguing enough, but there's like you hit the halfway point and some things happen and you're like, what? And then you have to keep reading. Uh, the fourth question is around Toy Story. And it's that we're supposed to identify a timeless book we plan to share with. The original question is um, kind of with your future offspring or your current offspring. But I have started to replace my theoretical future children with my nephew in any question or thing statement that I make because I don't like my theoretical future children are still very theoretical, but my nephew is totally real. I love my nephew. He is so adorable, but I am not sure he's going to be a big reader. It's hard to tell right now. He kind of eats books, but when they're young enough, you can force them to listen to you read to them. I am that aunt. So I'm going to go with like my classic childhood favorite picture book, which is Go Dog Go. It's just, I, I remember it so distinctly from my childhood, and there were many like childhood books I liked or enjoyed, but this is the one that I was like, yes, every child has to read Go Dog Go, because it has dogs, it has action, it's like super easy to follow along with, and there's a board book version, which I should probably get my sister and her husband, because apparently my nephew really likes to chew slash rip at books, so board books, they're more sturdy. The fifth question is kind of based around You've Got Mail, which if you didn't know is a remake of a previous film called The Shop Around the Corner, but of course it doesn't have Tom Hanks in it. It's a book you heard about on the internet and where you heard about it from. So the thing about this is that 
probably 80 to 90% of the books that I hear about or read now are books that I heard about on the internet. Even when a friend recommends a book to me, now I just spend so much time on the internet reading about books and seeing books and stocking them on Goodreads that I've probably already heard of it. But what I thought of is kind of the book or more like the person who got me into this pattern of looking at books on the internet and being part of the internet reading community and writing community and just how I got to where I am now. And that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Moss, or specifically Sarah Moss. She is a total sweetheart, and I read uh, her book back when it was Queen of Glass on Fiction Press and was completely different. And I followed her blog and followed her on her publishing journey through a progression of blogs that she had. I was connected to other like reading and writing blogs that talked about books. And then through those, I was eventually connected to writers on Twitter. And through writers on Twitter, I was eventually connected to BookTube. And that is how I have found primarily the like a huge chunk of my to read list is things that I found online. The sixth question has to do with Castaway, which can we just, can we have a moment of silence for Wilson? If you can only bring one book to a deserted island, what would it be? I decided that the book that would probably be best for me to bring to a deserted island would be All Creatures Great and Small. It's basically my favorite memoir. It is an English country vets memoir, and I have read this book more than I think any other book. The nice thing about it is that each chapter is like a little vignette, so you can read it straight through, but you can also read a chapter at a time and bounce back and forth. And I already know these stories so much, but I still so enjoy reading them again. The seventh question is based on Cloud Atlas, and it's what book did you have high expectations for that you that didn't quite meet them? So apart from Cloud Atlas itself, which I was severely disappointed by, most recently a book that I was very excited for and then was very disappointed by was Jesus Feminist. I basically expected it to be one thing, and it turned out to be something else. Else, and I wanted it to be ready for a certain audience and it really wasn't at all. So that's the end of the original tag but Sam added on some bonus questions. One of which is based on Saving Private Ryan and its favorite ensemble cast. So Sam I think defined this as more than four characters so it, that was really hard because I realized that it's, it's really tricky to pull off ensemble cast and I don't necessarily read a lot of ensemble cast books. I think this counts. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones, I think has a pretty ensemble cast. I love the way that it plays with fairy tale tropes. And I love this book, but I also love its movie. And they're two completely different things. The ninth question has to do with the Green Mile, and it's your most hated villain. This was so clear to me. It's Thiago from Lainey Taylor's Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, specifically in Days of Blood and Starlight. I actually, when I was preparing to read the third book, I listened to the first book again, but on audiobook this time. And every time Thiago was talking or was in the book, I just had like rage, like inner rage at how upset I was with him. There are other really evil characters in that book, but nobody gets under my skin and get, makes me so ticked off in the way that Thiago does. The penultimate question it was um based on turner and hooch and it's an animal character that stole the show i chose the perspicacious loris and the perspicacious loris is from scott westerfeld's leviathan series not just because it taught me the word perspicacious but it just is used so well by him in these books and then the final question that was added by sam is based on a league of their own and it is what is your favorite female friendship so this is so clear to me. It is Queenie and Maddie from Codename Verity. They just have a friendship that is so true. What I love about their friendship is the aspects of their friendship that are so tight and so true. Like, the, the book itself is in a very specific setting, and it, it benefits from that setting, but their friendship could be taken out of that setting and put anywhere and still be as strong and wonderful as it was. They would be friends anywhere, anytime, any place. The very last question, which was actually part of the original tag, is just what is your favorite Tom Hanks movie? And mine is actually one that hasn't been mentioned in any of these questions. It is Apollo 13. I love Apollo 13. I watched it when I was a kid, and it came out in theaters and enjoyed it. And then years later in college, I was like, I wonder if it's as good as I remember it being and I watched it again and it was just as good as I remembered it and so definitely my favorite Tom Hanks movie so far but hopefully he will continue to have a long and prosperous career. I would like to tag Rebecca from Why Mermaids who I basically will tag anytime it's movie related because I want to hear everything you have to say about movies. April from April Sarah and Sarah Ella. And so I hope that you ladies have time to do this tag. I hope that you like Tom Hanks at least somewhat. I definitely 
did not know as many of these movies as Sam did, but I really enjoyed taking the time to do this tag. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I was talking to, again, my younger sister, who's my consultant for this channel. I am obligated to note that my sister wanted me to choose the cat that Angela's like wear cat or whatever it's called from Aragon. And although I remember the cat being very interesting, I don't actually remember enough about Aragon and Eldest to choose the cat and I never finished that series. So I chose the Perspicacious Loris, but my consultant chose the cat. <laughs>